In this episode of My Hero Academia, Deku and his friends will learn to know what it means to lose. To feel so desperately that they're right, yet to fail all the same. The training camp arc has come to a close, and what a close it was. Deku and all of his friends utterly lost in this episode. They were not able to save Katsuki Bakugo from the clutches of the League of Villains. And it is heartbreaking, to say the least. This is an episode that honestly just made me shake and actually made me start to draw tears from my eyes. The scene where Deku is just on the ground, crying, screaming over the frustration of not being able to save Katsuki Bakugo just absolutely cut me like a knife. It was very intense, and it all happened so fast. They immediately pick up from the end of the last episode where they had just got done compressing Mr. Compress, and he manages to escape with his magical abilities, and a short battle ensues, which is really awesome and super well animated. I especially love that we got to see twice in action. He has this sort of, like, measuring tape razor wire that he can pull from a gauntlet on his wrists, which he uses to cut through uh, Shoto Todoroki's ice in a scene which is really flashy and a lot of fun. Dobby, of course, is using his signature blue fire, and Himiko Toga gets up and close with Deku practically declaring her love for him right before she jams a knife right into his face until Shoji comes in and bitch slaps the hell out of her in a really, really creepy scene where she says she's not really into him, but she's still gonna cut him down all the same. This all happens so incredibly fast that it's just mind-boggling when suddenly Kurogiri shows up and he's getting ready to teleport all of them away, and this is what I think might be the biggest surprise of the entire episode. Ever since I've been reviewing this show, I've talked about the fact that I love all of the characters, Except for Aoyama, Yuga, the belly button laser boy. And you know what? He actually managed to save the day in this episode. He did something really awesome. Right as Mr. Compress and Dobby are about to pass through Kurogiri's warp, we get to see that Aoyama just shows up and fires his laser right at Mr. Compress's face, which breaks his mask and also allows him to lose the marble, which contains the body of Tokoyami but they still manage to hold on to Katsuki Bakugos, and right at the last second, they release him from that marble, and Dobby's holding on to him by the neck as Deku is just desperately running towards him. And this scene hurt right here, because Katsuki Bakugo actually tells Deku, don't come, just leave, don't worry about me. He actually showed general concern for that character right before he disappeared, and this is when Deku's world is just crushed. Everything just ends in heartbreak. Not only are a lot of the students hurt, but Katsuki Bakugo has been kidnapped. A member of the Wild Wild Pussycats is completely missing Ragdoll, and the implication is that something really violent happened to her, because you get to see the weird helmet thing that she's wearing, and it's all covered with blood. This alone is incredibly disturbing. There's also a heartbreaking scene where we get to go back in time yet again, where we get to see that all of the students who are being looked after by Vlad desperately want to go out and help their friends. In particular, Hiroshima, who has formed a really strong relationship with Katsuki Bakugo. It's been seen in the series throughout, and he is almost at his limit here, but Vlad is just not going to let them go. Suddenly, they're attacked by one of Dobby's clones, which thankfully is stopped by the powers of both Vlad and Aizawa. I love that we got to see Vlad in action. Uh, his name actually makes perfect sense now, as he seems to utilize blood abilities. Like, he's able to, uh, like, splash blood on people and have it crystallize around them and utilize it in a number of different ways. Name being Vlad, being a reference to Vlad the Impaler, Dracula. His whole shtick is that he's basically a Dracula man. And then you have Aizawa who comes in and decides to do, like, this awesome kick attack on him and he just constantly stops him until the clone turns into mud yet again. But Aizawa is not letting any of these students go out there. Even so, he said they do have the ability to defend themselves. It's only for self-defense. And this is where they're all supposed to meet, so they're not allowed to leave. So you can imagine the emotions swirling with all of these characters, with those who've been hurt, with those who desperately wanted to help their friends but couldn't, and Deku, who experienced a massive loss. And after completely and utterly destroying his body, even with everything that he could do, he couldn't save his friend. And you can tell that it absolutely ripped him to pieces, and that was told best through not only the animation, but the freaking voice work. Deku screaming into the night as Dobby's blue fire lights up the forest is just such a haunting image. 
The second half of the episode is the build-up to the next arc of the series, and of course, getting to see the UA High School reel over all of this. The media, of course, is not happy, and they're wondering, like, how they're going to take care of this situation, what they're going to do for the parents of the students who were hurt. Really, it's just a massive PR nightmare, and All Might, of course, is very upset with himself, as he wasn't there at the time, he couldn't do anything, and he feels really bad because while all of this was going on, he was just relaxing and taking a bath. And throughout the entire episode, you can sort of, like, feel his anger growing, especially by the end of the episode, when we get the sudden realization that, yes, Momo did indeed put a tracker on that Nomu, and that's going to be very helpful in the investigation of finding out where these villains are. And All Might is ready to kick some ass. There's a scene where he's talking on the phone to Sakauchi, the Jim Gordon of the series, and he starts to, like, pump himself up, his eyes are glowing, and he's just ready to just rip some villains to pieces, and I can't wait to see it because he doesn't even care about the fact that his body is essentially getting destroyed. He's just ready to get some vengeance for all of the things that actually happened to his students and the fact that he could not be there during that time. Really, it's just an absolute mess. The thing is, though, we do have a really great cliffhanger ending where it looks like a civil war is about to begin, so to speak, where a lot of the other students are getting ready to go against the wishes of the teachers and form a team so that they can find out where Bakugo is so that they can save him. They realize that Momo was able to create a tracker for that thing that she put on the Noma's body and she could potentially make another one. And if they can get one of those, they can actually go and save Bakugo themselves. But they're also going to be running into a lot of trouble, not only just from the teachers themselves, but all the villains. And you can even tell that this is an idea that is really starting to sink into Deku's head by the end of the episode. Kirishima is the one who's being very vocal about it. And even uh, Ida, who's experienced things like this before, like going out of the line and, you know, going above the teacher's heads to do their own things. He's experienced this firsthand, so he's just like, no, we're not going to do this at all. But you can tell this is something that Deku's probably going to be a part of as the episode ends with a shocked look on his face. What's the rundown on this episode of My Hero Academia? Wow, just so breakneck and incredible and so emotional. I, I didn't expect it to actually get that way. I'm glad that they were at least able to get Tokoyami back, but I mean, in order for this arc to have any sort of just like impact, they had to get someone, and of course it's going to be Katsuki Bakugo. What their ultimate plan for him is, is kind of unclear. There's a one small scene where he's actually in the uh, the underground bar where they all hang out, and uh, he's completely handcuffed and not really saying a word. I'm guessing that Shigaraki wants to bring him into the fold and make him like the next big member of the group, but even though he has such an abrasive and explosive and annoying personality sometimes, Bakugo still has the ideals of a hero. Really, his entire personality is just a big personification of his actual powers. Loud and explosive and in your face. That's just the way that he is. And I'm really hoping that he isn't going to be swayed by all of these goons. I don't want him to turn into the Sasuke of the series at all. I just like him the way he is, which is loud, annoying, and awesome. Um, so I can't wait to see what's actually going to go on with that and who's actually going to decide to join this group to actually help out and try and save him, if that's really what's going to happen. And if we have both of these teams coming together, well, really, it's only a matter of time before they all run into one another. And if the preview is any indication, we're going to see some cool stuff, hopefully some All Might getting into some epic fights. That's something I'm very excited to see. Really, the sky's the limit here. But yeah, this episode right here was just an emotional emotional train wreck right here. It was handled so well and done with such great production value like the rest of this season. This season has been perfect, in my opinion. I mean, like, every episode has just been done with such great care, and I really hope for more from this one. And considering we're just getting started, guys, it's going to be an exciting time. My Hero Academia, like, over the last couple years has, like, broken its way into, like, my top five favorite anime series. And you know, it's not even really that like inventive or anything. It's just a superhero anime series. But the way they tell the stories and the way that they develop the characters, um, and of course just the production value itself, it's hard to ignore. This is a great series that you should definitely check out if you're into action anime. Um, so yeah, what more can I say? Solid addition right here. I'm giving this episode a 5 out of 5. I'd love to get your thoughts about it. If any of you guys did watch the episode, tell me what you thought about it in the comment section below and what you hope to see from the rest of the My Hero Academia anime series Season 3. Thanks guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more of my anime reviews. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, stay down now, baby.